Ten seconds remaining. Oh, Cloud9 like to do some picks in terms of their carry roll, I think. Because it's super fast. Oh. Reserve time. Any better? Might have been a bit further away than usual. I think Ritsu plays a bit of a different carry pool than people. I don't know if they've moved away from that now because I haven't watched them play in a while. <sighs> Dire team pick. Didn't Ritsu say it's his favorite hero overall and his best hero as well? I remember hearing that. Slider's really rising to prominence now, and it's nice to see different offlaners entering the pool. Boom. Didn't go back to where he was last patch. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Dire team pick. Yeah, I like the early aggressive line. They seem to go pretty well together. The only problem is they don't have much long range instant CC until they get the blink on slider, so might be a window where Leviathan's a bit more free to do what they want. Like slightly more mobile cores, like a when you don't have the best heroes of ganking them right now. Still three more heroes Five to pick. Seconds remaining. Dire team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, maybe Wonder and a quap. Be good. Play something different as well if they want to go for like DK, Mag, Gru, which are all time. very under the radar, I feel, right now. But it's viable picks. at running off with face so yeah I agree with you that I don't think Cloud9 will look to pick it up unless they decide it's a viable mid hero for them. It's probably not where they'd rather go. Dire team ban Ten seconds remaining Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. I, I think it really depends on the stand-in, but I'm pretty sure if you just give Mason a standard mid-hero, he'll do fine. He'll do what his team needs him to. So I don't think they'd be too worried about that personally. Could do now, though, if they ban the AA out and pick the Elk. No, 9 like that. 
Well, they, at least they used to. Maybe they're a bit hesitant to go towards it now of the recent decline. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. I'd favor it more for Cloud9 personally because they have a lot stronger synergy of the hero. And also, they're currently lacking a range support, which is generally what you look for. Dire team pick. I'm not sure on that. It might just be the Viphon player. I think. One game, I think it is, sort of casted of them they played it, so maybe it's just some inside knowledge. But Windrunner's really strong synergy with all the heroes. It's really hard to play mid against Windrunner when there's a Tusk coming in, Slada, and damage later. Heroes they have though, I think it's a really weird ban. So, like, Slada's really good against him because if you duel the target and then you get amp damage, you pretty much lose the 1v1. Tusk can save people, you've got Windrun Shackle, they got the Windrun if she's the one that gets dueled, so must just be some niche ban. Dire team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Uh, at this point, I'm just going to chop it up to the fact they don't want to play against it. Uh, I like the Lich pick. It gives them a lot of way to force Leviathan into a bad spot in the laning stage. Right now, Dazzle and... Sorry, go on. Yeah, and it's one of the worst nightmares of short lane players to be dealing with lanes like this. And drafters, I think, because you really have to play around it a lot. Yeah, it's a possibility, but then the sh only thing the Shaker can really offer right now, I feel like. Quop, it's the same thing you said, it's more potential. It's probably going to be the safe lane Quop, just to deal with the Slider Lich. Tusk Lich, and then they put Slider with a Port Hero Bottom, that's still an option. Dire Team Ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Yeah, but I don't think. I mentioned it could be a safe lane slider, but I don't think that I'd rather go with it. 
So the Undying Man's a tiny word, in my opinion. But it would synergize well if they can make the lanes work, because they really strong core of five heroes in the early game. And Leviathan need to kind of stem the aggression of Cloud9. Ten seconds remaining. Razor. Yep. Dire team pick. Mason Hero. I'm the other way, personally. I really like Razor as a hero. But I I really enjoyed playing around the time he was Ten super popular, remaining. and I also knew people who played him really well, so I liked drafting it a lot. Uh, I like remaining. it this game because some a mech hero. I don't think it's necessarily the route they want to go. Uh, it's strong lanes all around from Cloud Nine. It's going to be really hard for Leviathan to put themselves in a winning position. I'd expect them to lose at l least two lanes, maybe even all three. The supports aren't on point. It's an offlane shaker, right? Because you're the offlane player. A lot of burst damage, which is something they were lacking. When you have Ember, who can't really get into the fight. Go into Windrunner, Slider, or Razor. Same with Quop. You kind of have to kite a bit more, and the, the spells are a bit harder. So when you just have a hero that offers like 900 ish burst damage, it makes your life a bit easy. Five seconds remaining. Prepare for battle. Kin game wasn't on because I'm a genius. We've got Savage on that lich. We've got Tusk being played up by 1437. Windrunner being played by I know who you are, but you have no name all of a sudden. So that is Ritsu on there. That's weird. I had his name up earlier. Thank you, Reborn. Uh <laughs> MSS on that offlane slaughter, and I feel like I've gotten it. I've probably forgotten Mason on the Razor. Yeah, tossing it over to you. For Leviathan, we have Flying Zebra on the Dazzle, Nushim on the Lena, Shibi on the Ember Spirit, Wicked Conway, aka Francis on the Quaff, and Jess on the Earthshaker. One thing to point out is both teams saw the ward placement here, whereas Cloud9, they opted for more items on the bus, so they don't have any sentries right now, but Leviathan do, so I'd expect them to try and deal with this as early as possible to make the Shaker's life a bit easier. Those wards were placed at nearly exactly the same time, the, when um, I look at the timers, so I'm I'm feeling like, as you said, both teams probably have an idea that they're there. The Dire one was placed first, and they definitely saw Cloud9 place the ward, it's just Cloud9 used their brain to realize, okay, he, he's here, he obviously TB down, he's definitely placed a ward. So they yeah. shouldn't know it, sir. And Slaughter ends up with the top bounty rune, so Ritsu in this mid gonna be at a little bit of a disadvantage. And yeah, they do in fact choose to put Ritsu mid over <laughs> over Mason, uh, even though they're having him stand in for Brax. I don't know. I assume they're comfortable with this. You know, it was Cloud9's decision, but I wonder if Leviathan can at all capitalize on the slight role change here. Let me see if they can make themselves an advantage. I also think the sword got spotted out because the one on the Radiant Hill is placed a bit earlier, so I think they pinged it out, so they should know where this is. Probably the first 200 gold the Lich gets, he spends on sentries because they should know where both these wards are. Yeah, so usually pretty easy. 
to get that D ward and uh, MS is actually going to get a crap ton of form in this lane. Something I always worry about with the slaughter, it does feel like he needs a lane partner, but since Lich is chilling here, sacrificing creeps, MSS is going to have a fine time getting experience and even a little bit of form from the looks of it. So, yeah, he should have a very good time up there. Yeah, well, Shaker might get a little bit more, but I feel like two heroes probably enough. Although it is a tusk, I don't know. This is just kind of you run at the Earthshaker and poke his butt. Like I don't, I don't if feel that's like your you. Preference, then yeah, I guess. I mean, he just did it, so I, I mean, I don't know whether that is like a gonna be great harass for the Earthshaker. I don't know how worried he'll be in this bottom lane. Once Razor gets boots up and gets level two, they definitely have kill potential. Yeah, 100%. And actually, Francis going in onto Ritsu mid. Ritsu still has the wind run, leaving it till the last moment. Has a salve though, so it should be fine. And, uh, that was really close, actually. I'm surprised he didn't skill his blink to the scream. Trying for the first blood. Yeah, the she actually lane doesn't. Is dead. She doesn't have it. Yeah, there. She finally gets it. Now she's going in, but she doesn't have a mana for the screen. And Wicked is punished here. Takes quite a few auto attacks. Yeah, that's just trading regen. Yeah. Both of these heroes getting close to their bottle, and then I think we'll see some more explosive action instead of what we got going on now. So, although Tusk, uh, and this is what I mean, I feel like unless the Pwop makes a huge mistake, is out of position, gets shackled, the Snowball's not going to do it, because she's just going to blink away. Yep. Yeah. It's really hard for them to deal with the clock right now, but they don't have to. Ritsu should be doing fine in his lane. He's a tiny bit behind at the moment, but he'll catch up. The biggest problem, I feel like, is the Razor's missed some CS bottom. So, he'll be a bit behind oh, where wow. he should be. Yeah, he's actually lower than the Ember, which I'm a bit surprised by feeling like the Ember should have the harder time just with the amount of pulling and so on this top lane has been doing. Um, not the Dire Pull, the Radiant have also been pulling, just kind of being a bit of a nuisance, disrupting the creep equilibrium. So. They managed to hit the Light Strike Array though, on Slaughter. Always nice. Um, but he's sprinting back and it looks like Newsom's gonna be taking a Slithering Crush to the face. Do they have the Shallow Grave? They do. They pop it a little bit early maybe. And now they've got the Searing Chains. It looks like MSS is going down and that is our first blood. And they can't quite get the kill on Lena. She is so low but it looks like they're gonna kill off poor Mr. Lich as well. And Newsom, that we have a pause, but Newsom gets out on about 25 health before the regen kicked in. I think they were just trying to be a bit more aggressive though. The lane really peaks in the next few minutes, where they get the levels on Lich, so he actually has more than the level 1 nuke. Slada gets higher levels, so he can here, etc. And the squads probably aren't going to be getting too many. Now they've got their kill, it's like, that lane's a lot harder. So hopefully they just play it more passively and try and get what they can. Yeah, there's certainly a lane where they can kind of salvage it just by playing safer. Maybe doesn't don't get the early kills that they were hoping for, but they will probably be able to get farm a little bit and it definitely experience blessings on blessings. What does that mean? Mason thing. Okay. I I am not in the know with Mason things. So But yeah. Um let's see. <laughs> what else we've got around the map? See if we've got anything else interesting. We've got the sentry coming out, so they've dewatered this bottom. <laughs> I'm just laughing at the text. Um, we've got more sentries coming out. They still haven't caught either of these wards here. And we have no early smokes. A bit surprised by that. I do feel like Lena can certainly early smoke up with some help, but. Since it is an offlane Earthshaker, I guess they're not deciding to do anything there. They want to do top, it's just the other lane as much as possible, so they're not going to look to smoke too early. They'll probably let Lina get some levels. Maybe when Quap gets 6, that's their smoke timing. Or when Shaker gets 6 bottom, they can maybe look to go down there for a smoke. But if they just keep doing what they're doing right now, they're in a better position. I hope the Lich does pick up... Wards are such a big deal. This one already got dewatered. Yeah. Bottom, so if the Tusk... He doesn't have to pick up sentries, he already did. I, I'm an idiot, I didn't see that. But if he gets a chance to go over to mid now and deward the other ward, it's going to be really helpful. The earlier he does it, the more value it is. 
Yeah, definitely. Sorry, just having a bit of a giggle about the chat. Just looking over these two lineups, did you have a preference for one overall? I'm a huge fan of Ember Spirit as we approach late game, but it, he needs a lot of time to get online, something where he usually doesn't get. I think the average timing this patch is 25 minutes for the Battle Fury, and he needs damage items past that, and then good RNG, right, to get those crits. And Razor just feels like a bit more of a reliable carry, although maybe one that doesn't scale super hard. I've got to say I prefer Cloud9's lineup just because, despite the fact they died in the lane, I feel like they have a better synergy between their heroes, and I, I like the more aggressive lineups in general. Yeah, something else I didn't actually think of until just now, Amplify Damage is also going to help out with the Razor's Eye of the Storm, because it's physical damage. So, just a nice little yeah. synergy. Radiant's bottom tower. It only helps out, because... Razor can ramp up his damage, and he gets to hit pretty hard pretty fast if he levels up the link and gets a decent charge off. Which he'll be able to do, because there's a lot of lockdown coming out from like the Dusk, the Windrunner, Sladar, even the Lich yeah. slows. And they... Yeah, they uh, have Earthshaker stacking up already for Ember? It's kind of an interesting move. I know he's having trouble in lane is the real reason he's over there, just trying to be useful across the map. But it does feel like it's a bit early to be stacking up for the Ember. I I don't think they can take it on him for quite a while. But it's probably just do something with it time as opposed to sitting in the lane and achieving nothing. So... Yeah. Nope, we Especially have a snowball in, in snowball. onto Jenkins. We're gonna have the plasma field as well. And now one more auto attack should do the job and they get the kill. So, yeah. nice getting a return kill on the opposing offlaner as well. Uh, this is when the Shaker's life gets very really hard, and he's going to need to tell his team to carry TP, so if they do dive like that, uh, a possible turnaround. Or he yeah, needs but... to not be there in the first place. TP mid now to refill the bottle, which I still think is a stupid in this game. I hope they remove it. Uh, it seems to be something a lot of the players like, so they'll probably keep it in for a bit. <laughs> It's completely game-breaking, though. Like, your support's losing his lane. What does he do? He just TP's mid and wins you the lane by one bottle refill. So stupid. <laughs> and th they decide to deward the mid now that the task is over here. So, good stuff with yeah. him. Realizing it's super it's still late, there. though. It's a ward that's only had a minute left. Yes, maybe they get a smoke up in this minute. That's fantastic. But now Leviathan know that they have some sort of vision over there. And this is a really common D ward spot. If you're Leviathan, you're going to check there. So, I don't think they're too upset that they lost uh, oh, a minute of vision. No, but it's just good from Cloud9 because now they're not going to have any vision of this six minute rune. If the Windrunner actually opts to come up, they have multiple heroes here scouting it out, so okay. this rotation is actually really bad for Leviathan. Yeah. I'm really confused by this rotation. They're actually going to get a haste rune on the Tusk. Snowball in onto Francis. Francis taking quite a bit of damage. And the Shackle at the same time as Life Strike Array, though. So I don't know how much they can capitalize on it. There is a Sonic Wave ready to come out. But instead, she just uses the screen. He is going to be the Sonic Wave. It hits three on the back lines as well. They're going to get them. Queen of Pain might go down here. But no, she uses the screen and blows them up. A four for nil coming out for Leviathan. And holy cow, did they turn that around? I have to say, a lot of that on Francis. Blinking forwards, killing off the Tusk, and then turning around to use the Sonic wave and making sure he had mana for all of those spells. Having the early stick helps a lot there, but I think most of that's on MSS missing his crush. He oh. managed to lock down the quap, or just, just I think it was the dazzle who was close. He kind of had two heroes here that got shacked. Why is it lame me draw? Two heroes here, and then there was like one here, and he just whiffed all three. So yeah, I actually it thought it was a... pretty useless. Yeah, it was actually a really nice shackle, and as you said. Unfortunately, not the follow-up. The Light Strike Array from Newsham on that, Lena. Also really good. Uh, stopped a lot of damage that could have killed off Wicked... Uh, sorry, not Wicked. <laughs> killed off Francis in that shackle timing. But Mason's still farming up a storm on bottom. Of course, Quap's going to be ahead with those three, four kill involvements she just got. Um, what do you do here? It does feel like on C9, they have a bit of a rough time with the catch-up farm, just because both Windrunner and Slaughter don't really have a good catch-up farming mechanic. I guess you could say, oh, as I missed the kill on the bottom lane. Um, I guess you could say Razor can use Plasma Field, sort of, but it's kind of similar. Razor's not the fastest farmer in the world. Razor's decent at farming. As you say, he has the Plasma Field, which is good enough. And in general, he's probably going to be looked to fighting this game more than he's going to be looking to farm up. Whereas the Ember's obviously going to be trying to get as much as he can. They're actually going in mid with the fish. I have another scream in two seconds. 
purpose for this, you might be able to pick it up, but I'm looking for the safer play. Yeah. Oh my goodness, how did they get this ward without anyone noticing? I'm really impressed they managed to get that one all the way over there. So, a nice job also. Went for the fight. Yeah. When he went up the hill here, we just dropped the ward. Cloud9 should know it's there in theory, but it's really hard in the the moment Damn. to realize. Yeah, you're not okay, checking they inventories. Yeah, they were there for a reason, so they obviously want to place the ward and get something done. Cloud9 could use that, but when you're playing, there's a lot of things on your mind, so I wouldn't be surprised if they don't know it's there for a while. Now for this Earthshaker, Jenkins, having a really rough time down here. He's almost level 6. It's one of those things where we're probably going to see some desperation ults maybe end up coming out, you know, not knowing that you might just need to use it on one person because you're in a bit of a shit spot. How do you catch up here? Does he just kind of maybe hope his tower gets pushed and then think that the creeps will be in a safer position? Does he ask his team to make space for him, or do you just suck it up and get no fall? I think you go for the latter of that, because at the moment, the Lena's doing pretty well for farm. She has arcane stick. Pretty good for her. She's going to hit level 6 by 10 minutes if she actually goes to the jungle. She's transitioning for a smoke now, so she might get it from the kill. The Shaker doesn't need to be doing too much right now. He'll just get his involvement through fights. Yeah, they're actually TPing down, but already the Shaker is dead. They've got Dazzle down here. The rest of the TP is taking literally years. And now the Light Striker Ray completely off the mark by Newsham. Didn't expect Mason to come on to him. And now Quap is here. She does have the Sonic Wave. She can go for it. That's a very dead Mason. Actually jumps forward for the Scream on Tusk. And now just auto attack down. And he said another. I mean, it felt like they got a good clean pick off on the Earth Shaker. And then too many rotations. A really nice job from Leviathan. This seems like... A very different Leviathan than the one we saw playing yesterday against Complexity. Uh, I think it's the Comfort Heroes because they know what they're doing right now. They have a clear game plan and it's working out. Despite the fact I really think this engagement shouldn't have favorably. They're doing really well in the lanes, making good use of the spells. Now the Quap is up again with Lena, I'd expect them to smoke again, just try something similar. Yeah, I have to say I've been really impressed with how Disciplined, I guess I would say, Francis is being with this Quap ulti. A lot of the times we see players, and I think it's usually fine early game, you blow it kind of earlier because you're not involved in those big team fights, usually within the first 10 minutes. And Francis has been like, no, nope, think I can get two, think I can hold it for something bigger, and been pretty successful so far with it. So, you're going to have a very early Orchid, which, ah! Uh... I, it, actually, never mind. That really helps you kill a Windrunner, because then she can't use that Windrun and just not take any of your physical hits. But we yeah, have a nice shackle shot. onto Francis. There's going to be a Slytherin crush to follow up. Can she get the blink away? No, she cannot. So when uh, Quap goes down and Windrunner gets a much needed kill and gets the streak, which is really going to buff up her farm, which had been going pretty poorly until that point. Yeah, uh, six. Yeah, uh, can't speak. Stick shackle coming out from. Are they going to look to a transition bottom? They're moving all the heroes here, so clean up this tier 1. Oh, goodbye, Newsham. Getting a snowball in. Nobody actually came in with that snowball, but that ice shot is more than enough. And actually, I don't think Shibi wants to be here. Shibi's trying to walk it out. Does have a tiny, tiny remnant, but taking way too much physical damage. It goes down uh, completely with TP by Leviathan, and they smartly don't rotate any more. I think not understanding that there were five there, and they're going to smoke right after that gank, which I think is a beautiful play from C9. Making sure that their opponents don't realize, you know, uh, they're probably all backing up a little bit, but maybe not expecting an immediate smoke. Although Dazzle has backed all the way. If the smoke doesn't achieve anything, though, it gets at least two really important wards. Yeah, they are super deep. They're going to show rotations like right now. This Queen of Pain, she might walk into a bunch of them. You don't actually have a chance to blink away if she's not careful. The punch, she can't get out, and that is the second death on Francis, having such a great early game, completely whipping it. And now Jenkins is coming in, but again, you're just fighting one by one into so many heroes. Echo Slam a bit off the mark. Will they even get the tusk they managed to? But now Jenkins with the Shallow Grave. I don't know if that saves you. Shackle doesn't latch, though. They have the Laguna Blade. Need more damage onto the Windrunner. They actually get the kill on her. Alina gives up her life, but she gets the Windrunner first. So I think that ends up being worth it. And they get Jenkins out alive, but a messy, messy fight losing their Quap. Yeah, unfortunately the Quap just getting caught out there, not realizing the heroes were there, which is all due to the smoke. Yeah, and MSS might... suddenly has a blink. The past few engagements have been going pretty well, and he's opted to go straight blink as opposed to 
Anything else? I'm actually gonna get a kill on the Lich here. Oh my goodness, what are you doing being so deep, Shibby? But it works out, he kills off Savage there. And it looks like maybe some more action in middle? No, everything's just gonna calm down there. The Ember Spirit is... building an Aquila. Huh. I would have expected drums out of him, but I guess it might just be a player pre player preference. With all of this early aggression, was really expecting a drums for the team, but instead, Aquila, and it will help his farmer. But we have a go on in on the task light strike array as well. Dragon slave just to finish him off. Yeah, Although we have action up top oops. as well. Shackle hits again. Shibby has no remnant. Even if he did, it doesn't matter. He's gonna go down. They're still going. Let's see if they can find anyone else. Mason does have Eye of the Storm active, but maybe not wanting to fight into all of them. The Fissure misses, and now the Shackle won't latch, but it might just buy them enough time. Nusham is trying to act like their little Zona, but he is low on health and fading fast. So finally this action at top dies down. Queen of Pain could come in. She does have the Sonic Wave, but probably deciding there's just too much business going on around here. She picks up a haste rune as well, so she's gonna look to put pressure on the task mid. Yeah, she's gonna get Warriors punched up. She should be able to finish him. I don't know if she wants to commit the Sonic Wave. She does hit him. One more auto attack will do it. And she should be able to get out blinking after those few bad engagements. So we've had a lot of action happening, getting ourselves up to not quite two kills a minute, but getting close. But it is an even in net worth and uh, only a small experience lead for Cloud9. Lena's also opting to come back. Actually, go top. Marsha, he'll go down. He has a remnant. So. I am gonna miss this because I was actually gonna try to blow my nose for a second because I can hear nah, my he, voice. He's fine. Me. Okay, yeah, he gets out. Excellent. Pulse alarm. I need you to talk for a second while I fix my nose. All right. Well, Lena and Shaker swoke up, so they want to get the wrap around on top. If they find Radio the lich, he has an ulti, so they need to catch him first. Fortunately, the slider breaks the smoke. Fortunately, they like... warded the ward here, so they have no vision on oh, the Leviathan uh, heroes. The sentry is off the mark. It seems like in a really ambitious place to go in on. I mean, Slaughter, we've talked about this, bit tanky. While Razor isn't... Oh, he actually went Sanj first out of the Sanj and Yasha, so he's tanky too. And it looks like we're gonna have a big old team fight. Queen of Pain, Sonic Wave, yeah, on cooldown for ages since she used it for that mid tusk kill, so... I really hope the Ember just dodges this fight and they go farm him up. He doesn't need to be here. They should just sack this tower. It's a 5 hero rotation. They so know ambition. exactly where Jenkins is and he gets he takes a nice wall. There's the blink in. He's gonna be snowballed. They try to use the light strike array to see if they can help and the shallow grave, but I think the rest of them just need to back the hell out. There is no backup coming. They're gonna get their courier killed. Rip chicken. And, yeah, the llama. It was yeah, it was the llama courier. I'm pretty sad right now. I'm yeah, Ember does end up dodging it, but as you said, probably should have dodged earlier, could have definitely not had Jenkins sacrifice his life, and I think the courier, really painful, it gives everybody, it's a little bit less for everybody on your opponent's team than a tower, but it's it's right up there, I think it's 150, so. It, and also, it's just really annoying when your cores are like, for example, the cop nearly has his orchid, right? And he's going yeah. like, I have to go back to base to pick that up, so it's really inefficient for him. Unfortunately, the Ember doesn't care as much because he's zipping around the map quite a lot. Yeah, he d is going to have some stuff delayed uh, being passed over to him, though, either way. And yeah, so uh, they're going to exchange top. I think Ember can put some pressure on bottom, but he's not exactly a strong pusher, although this tower was already at half health, so maybe he can do something there. They keep acting like they want to contest it on Leviathan, but gonna have no such luck and the tower goes down but now slaughter is maybe thinking of jumping someone he has a bit of the wraparound behind him he doesn't know it but this queen of pain i think she's actually in the danger zone francis you don't want to be there and in fact they're gonna blink out oh my goodness did they power shot the creep sees quop did you see that no i was watching bottom okay the melee creep oh yeah he remnanted away ember spirit was in a bit of danger i'm guessing and then remnanted out i was just trying to set up with the task but so Pop was, uh, Lena, not Lena, Winona was attacking a creep camp, Quop came in and, uh, threw an attack, I guess, or the creep just knows she's there because it's psychic, and then Windrunner is probably like, why is this creep attacking something out of my vision? <laughs> so, it's Creeps silly. do shit like that at times, it's really annoying. Yeah. Either way, everything here calming all the way down. A slight lead for Cloud9, but we're really within a completely acceptable range. This game can go either way, and there's a lot more game to go. Having a look around at some item pickups we may have missed, we've got Tusk 
he, yeah, he's being their mech carrier, not too unusual. Slaughter might work on a force staff now, might try to build up a bigger item. He could maybe afford to be greedy. His farm is pretty good, considering he was off laner. Um, and they're going onto the rune again. Will they have the lockdown? He manages to remnant away this Lich Blast. Oh, yeah, let's watch, oh. let's watch it fly. Mmm, Lich Blast. So, doesn't actually hit, but yeah. <laughs> I was really close, unfortunately, for Jack our time on the Lich Hulk just being too long. And also it with him going buffed, for the- It got buffed, I thought, Lost Patch. It did, it got buffed Lost Patch to the projectile speed, but still not fast enough. Still not enough. Maybe if he yeah. had the four points for his Q, he would have been able to get the kill. Yeah, maybe. Something I wanted to mention earlier, I wasn't the biggest fan of it, but with how the lane went, I understand he just wants to get as much use out of the manner as he can, and play like a more defensive hero, as opposed to being like a high nuke hero. Yeah, I think after their early deaths, they decided, look, we're just going to try to screw over their lane in the most passive way possible. So, taking, continuing to take a look around to items, Ritsu's doing good work towards that Aghanim's. Feels a bit late, actually, but no, he's farming fine. Yeah, yeah, so it is fine timing. I think just some Windrunners maybe having good starts in the games, I see. So, is fine timing on that. Um, and his farm is great. We've also got a really tanky Mason. I love this. I feel like it, it's a very standard build. We've seen it before. But I love this on the Razor. He is just going to be such a pain in the ass to kill off. And he'll act a bit like a Viper does, where he might not be outputting the biggest damage, although a Razor certainly can if he gets off a lot of Eye of the Storm. But you can't kill him off so easily, so he just stands there and gets to dish it out, and it adds up. I really like Razor's hero. But most importantly, as soon as he finishes the axe, he's going to be a big threat for the tower push. Yeah. Why they drafted the hero. He's going to put Leviathan in sticky situations. If they try and do shit where they defend the tower and then get picked off, like happened here with the Shaker, they need to just clean up calls. Can't let that happen when the Razor is able to push towers, but that's like four or five minutes away at least, so they've got a bit of time still for the Ember to pick up his farm and co-op to maybe start working on a BKB. Yep. We have got, as we talked about, the Orchid is up on co-op, and there's a full mech on Lena. I really like this early mech. She got it kind of, Lena got a bunch of early kill involvement, always nice for her, but she can flash farm as well, and having this early mech just makes Leviathan's team fight a little bit better if they are in those 5v5 engagements, because they do have that extra health on everyone, but they're going to probably lose this mid tower, not looking like they have any desire in fighting. We'd rather siege bottom a little bit, keep farming up that Ember, who's rocking. Oh, he just bought, yeah, he bought straight up the person Perseverance and gonna be working towards that battle fury and his timing on it assuming he doesn't go down he has to be a little bit careful with MSS having a blink but he should have decent timing on that as well yeah, I'm actually really surprised one for the mech I pointed it out earlier but I feel like captain's telling them we can fight but that I don't think oh, they can. as you're saying that, they're going to take a snowball, and I think Lena just has to stack him. The ice shots actually block them out. A nice echo slam, but it is not enough on Lena. She's probably going to get out Mason, thinking about going in. Searing Chain's kind of whiff. I don't know if he meant to slide a fist there, or he thought Mason was close enough, but not nearly. At the same time, MSS has somehow walked by Ember Spirit. He popped the Invis, but now MSS, he's going to catch a flying zebra. The Shallow Grave was on cooldown, but he can't get it off, and I fear Newstrom's just going to go down as well. They are too fast for this Lena. Can't get off the Light Striker of dreams just felt like a really big whiff there for leviathan just getting out outplayed in that team fight and steering chains off on the side's not gonna be enough cancelling the tp yeah but this is what i mean where they have to take really hard to execute fights for it to be favorable for them like cloud nine have to group up into all the nukes that uh, leviathan have and Ember's at the point where he does a decent amount of damage, but he's just too squishy to be there for prolonged periods of time. However, I feel like they should know. Can't do this. Being way too greedy trying to defend these towers, they should just give them up and get their farm. Especially that when Jenkins is nowhere near, you know, he doesn't have the blink, he got put behind on it again. Just let the guy get the blink, it will really help up if you do want to defend, and it'll buff up your team fights. Unfortunately, it's not too easy to split push this game, but that's how they have to play. Like, if the Dazzle sat behind the Ember, the Dazzle might die, similar to, like, Wisp being defensive, but the Ember will always be able to get out. Whereas, the uh, Shaker can sit behind the cloth, and then the Lena can farm wherever's relevant. Because she has a mech, her farming speed's not very good, her ability to pick off people is drastically lower, because she has defensive items. 
I just feel like it's really mishmashed communication by fun. Really well earlier, but now they're just kind of falling apart, I feel like. Yeah, the last few engagements they've taken have been very unfavorable for them, and what maybe this is very similar to what we saw with Complexity, right? They had that first game. The second game, I think, was a bit of a wash, but in their first game, they had a lot of really good early engagements, and then Complexity just grouped up and ran them down. Either way, we're only 23 minutes in, so there's still a lot of potential. To go yeah, I expect way. the next five, six minutes of the game to be pretty big, though. Nine can manage to brush or more of the tier twos for the map control. They'll probably be able to pick up a gem soon. The Tusk is nearly finishing his mech. Back's on the razor now, so they might wait for the mech and look to group up. SVG's close ish to a gem. Yeah, they're gonna go for the Roshan. It's super easy for them with that amp damage with that focus fire. So it's gonna be a very fast Roshan and Leviathan not acting like they have a clue or maybe just finally deciding hey we can't actually team fight this let's just give it up try to avoid fights for the next five minutes and see if we can't wait out that aegis but they're gonna lose a tower for it and leviathan actually looking like they want to smoke like if they hadn't defended several of the towers before and taken one or two bad fights that's an easy contest on the rush because the shaker would have his time dina would have like a different item if they were playing differently uh, now they're trying to smoke into an aegis and pick up which just too late. They, they need yeah. to realize this, and I hope they don't go for it. It feels see like it a very well. ambitious play. Maybe they just pick off the courier as it returns through its route. That can always be a big thing. Yeah, you didn't get it on the front lines, but oh, they're just going to let it fly over them. And as you said, MSS they're going for really the back line play. Though. Oh, he blinks out of it, pinging them out as well. They know about this. They've got the dazzle weave coming up, and now here comes the initiation. Going to be that BKB from Queen of Pain, but the shackle of dreams. Jenkins isn't going to be able to do anything. Lena's been picked up on the back line. There is the Lich ult. Not going to bounce to anyone, but that shallow grave. Just going to save him for nothing. Gets up a fissure, but he immediately dies. And this team fight already gone completely wrong for Leviathan. They just need to get out. They don't have a defensive remnant, and the ice shell's blocking them off. He remnants to the low ground, but Slaughter gonna kill off Flying Zebra, and probably gonna be able to follow. They know exactly where Shibi is, so might go down here Chase anyway. Here. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm following him. They can chase him. He doesn't have a great way of getting out. Windrunner doing Windrunner things. She does have a blink as well, so she could blink forward, but there's nothing easy to shackle to unless she gets the dream. No. Didn't quite, but Slithering Crush gonna follow it up, and Shibi might just be dead! Oof. They're gonna like get the said... two off this. They didn't even burn the Aegis. Like this is just painful to watch. Honestly, the yeah, it... understanding what they need to do this game is just not on point. Yep, it was not the best of engagements to take. On the other hand, I can see that maybe they felt like they were just going to slowly fall out of it. I don't think they were. I feel like their Ember Spirit's been farming up fine. They needed to just keep having him farm, but it could be that they felt that the pressure was on on the side of Leviathan. I agree with that, to be honest, because when you had the start they had, they're probably like, alright, we're, we're doing really well, we're getting the mech on Lina, we can fight them. I think they were just really optimistic with that, and then when they realized their game plan was going away from them, they went for this desperation play, and I've got to give credit to MSS being in the perfect position to deal with that flank. That was yeah. really smart from him, covering that, because I feel like not a lot of teams are experienced enough to realize that the other team need to make to get back into the game. Mm -hmm. And Mason's just going to take the ancient stack. He took quite a few of them. He left some of them. Just not wanting to overstay his welcome. But MSS with an invis. Just going to be running around. Being a pain. Maybe he'll catch someone out. But he's probably just scouting. Seeing if there's anything interesting. So, look. Probably like go on the leaner and then blink out and just make more space. Yeah. I mean, he can just be a pain in the ass, like we saw before. It's something where you can just maybe cancel a TP or two and be a great pain. And yeah, Mason farming up a storm, pardon the pun, with his ult. So he's almost level 16. That's another thing to point out. The level advantage on the Radiant is huge, right? They've got level 2 ultis on everybody who needs them. The Dazzle's still level 9. Just... He doesn't even have Shallow Grave Max, he's got one point in that Poison Touch, but does mean no Max Shallow Grave, and Earthshaker finally has Blink, but it might be too little too late. At least this will make the high ground push for C9 a bit more difficult. Yeah, I think they have like a minute and a half on the Aegis, so might look to try and force something after they push out some lanes. I'm not sure if they're close to any big items. Well, no. Lich is approaching his Rod of Atos, which will just be more kiting for Ember Spirit, assuming the remnants are down. I 
mean, Race has got free kick, but I'd expect him to go for something like an AC or a butterfly for more sieging. He'll also go mm. for a, a refresher, but I think it's too early for that option. And it doesn't feel like they need it. I find a lot of the times you go the refresher when you're trying to do some sort of split push shenanigans. You really want to make sure your push is out pushing their push. They can siege these towers. They've got focus fire on cooldown every 15 seconds. You know, it's they're not in the dire straits at all. No, I agree. They're just comfortably getting in a position to win this game. Standing in the lead. I'd like to see gem though. That's the only thing they haven't done yet. But they are centering as opposed to buying a gem. And what do you say, I feel like Leviathan, as I said, they're not out of it yet, they definitely could have some good base holds, you just need a few good base holds. Speaking of holds, they're gonna have the uh, little enchant totem gonna lock down Mason, they need so much damage, he's finally at half health, they still can't use the bloody Laguna Blade, and even if they do, that's just life number one, but no, they maybe should have used it! Kills off Francis in this team fight. it's going awry again! I feel like just dropping the Laguna on Mason would have been it, but Lena, she doesn't have the mana, and now that she's used the mech, she has even less, she might no, I have the storm not gonna be enough to kill her. Okay, I was like, I understand why they held the Laguna Blade. They didn't want to just waste it on Aegis. But I think not using it there killed their Lena. Killed most of their team. Now he has BKB and he's off, so they're gonna look to use this window, I think. Yeah. They can maybe force a buyback out of the Qua. Half one, yes, she does. Yeah, she does, and. It is not what she wants at all. She's the one person on this side of Leviathan that's doing really, really well and buying back just really going to hurt her farm progression. They're opting not to go for it, though. They could have made a beeline down mid and tried to tier 3, but opting for tilt lanes instead, so... Not a problem for Cloud9. They're doing what they're doing, sentrying up the map, getting really deep. So I really like how they've been using... The this game, the movement's been pretty on point, warding's been really on point. It's not just good vision, but it's good vision at good times to give the word, like, accompany what they want to do. Yeah. I know there's a better word, but I can't think. <laughs> but yeah, they've been playing a really good game from C9, and it's feeling like they're making it hard for Leviathan to do any sort of thing. High ground pushes always, sometimes you get a magical new life there. But again, even if they get a good amount of form, this Ember, he's finally got up his Battle Fury. He needs probably the full Daedalus to be doing Actually something. Going and they're, on the yeah, they're going. Let's see if they can pick off a Tusk. It's tiny. Wicked. Oh, Francis uses the bloody BKB. So if they don't make something off of this, it's a bit unfortunate. That was a uh, big kill for them. Over a thousand gold swing but this BKB is now down to 8 seconds for that, and that was a tusk kill for 8 second BKB. At least the Aegis has expired at this point. Yeah, in their mind, they're giving themselves time to do things on map. When Cloud9 aren't 5, they're going to kill it back a tiny bit more. They're going to farm safer areas. So it gives Leviathan chance to do what the dust is doing now, move oh, up, get some vision. Oh, but as you say this, Shibby, yeah. Oh, Shibby doesn't actually go down. He got very close. So... Oh, they're uh, yeah. looking to smoke off, so they might be able to catch Ritsu here, but he knows something's up. He's back I feel to his like team. you can't gank someone around a tier 1 tower that's still up at 31 minutes in. You know, it's not like early game where maybe you gank someone under a tier 1 tower, your enemies don't have TPs because it's so early, they're just sitting in lane. Bomb and items. I hope um, they don't go for this. This is such obvious bait. Oh, they went for it. They used the Echo Slam and everything. Sonic Wave's gonna come out. Actually manages to pick her up. They get the Mega Kill Streak, but the Lich ulti, it's bouncing around. Thank goodness it goes to the creeps, but it still looks like they're losing too. They somehow managed to get both of them. This, I think, is actually freaking even for them. I think that was the best they could hope for, considering they got the Slaughter as well. For Leviathan, I mean, yeah. They get yeah. about 900 gold, and that fight, which we thought was gonna go poorly, C9 just didn't have the right heroes, the blink wasn't up on the tusks, so he couldn't save Ritsu on that Windrunner. It was, like, so close to being able to dodge the Laguna with the snowball. It was really yeah. close, so... It was the right play from C9 to bait that, and I feel like it was the wrong play from Leviathan to go in, but it worked, so... Yeah, can't be mad when it works. Either way, there's so much healing coming out. They could siege this for days, and they don't have much to stop Mason other than running at him. And he might just kill them if they come into his space. I have the storm about to be off cooldown. They did get a good push on top. You know, they've added some pressure there, got some nice money in their pocket for this lineup of Leviathan. But, ugh. How do you feel about this Lich going, Atos? Really good against Amber. 
Could I guess it is hiding for point him. Boost, uh, yeah. He goes for something like a Glimmer Cape instead, but... It, he's close to it and he's just not finishing it. He'll... What's possibly Oh, we got a walk. snowball coming in. Can he get out? There's no blink on 1437. He's probably just gonna go down here. Where is the backup though? Laguna Blade, they need a little bit more. Scream catches him. I was a bit worried for a second there. It looked like they Laguna Bladed thinking they had it and we're just gonna, you know, cool guys don't look at explosions, walk away. But um, two quick pickoffs there, and all of these really helping out Leviathan. They were over 10,000 gold behind. They're working slowly their way back in it, but as you can see from this graph, they need about. 10 more of those good pickoffs, and at bottom lane it looks like SVG somehow going down, getting caught out by Francis. Savage not being so savage over there. And she almost has a blink, uh, not blink, a uh, cheap stick. I need tea. I am caffeine dehydrated apparently. Really it's gonna be Shiva's just because the yeah, armor's such a big factor this game. Mm. You can see if he wants to go Hex, but uh, the Shiva personally. It would certainly help as well just against Razor, you know, uh, certainly slowing him down a little bit. Damage helps a lot as well, but mm -hmm. see the armor that he'd worry about, I feel like. Yeah, and now I'm beginning to agree with you. Lena going this early mech arcane boots means that now, only now does she have up the Aghanims and she still doesn't have something like the Yules to set up ganks. Yules here, there are a number of places where Tusk had been in there. Maybe you Yules him up instead of him walrus punching your Ember Spirit and creating that sort of lockdown. Yules being instant as opposed to uh, bloody Light Strike Array, which takes years to land. Yeah, it's also really easy to dodge the Light Strike Array, <laughs> but sometimes it's enough when they try to side death that your carry or whoever can get away. Speaking of Shiva's, Razor opts for one himself. Yeah, we're gonna see some Shiva on Shiva action. It's kind of weird, they kind of cancel each other out, but I feel like this Razor's just gonna have the better hand with this. He's gonna run in Shiva's everyone, they're gonna be trying to run away from him because he's a Razor with Eye of the Storm coming out and they're all gonna die. And now Cloud9 moving towards Roshan, smoked up, but the smoke's gonna be broken. Lena gets it, they don't actually hit all, but they land the Shackle. You don't need to land your Slithering Crush if you hit Shackles like that. Quite the few picks they've been giving in the first few minutes, it's kind of gonna happen with how they've been playing. They smoke up at the right time, cure a pick off so Leviathan are not gonna feel comfortable contesting Rush and now is where they're gonna look to force their lead. They've got Daedalus on Ritsu, he picks up the Aegis as well, makes them not needing it because he's fairly tanky. They just have to deal with the split push now, Ember should be fine top unless he gets bashed. They get Dazzle's a quick kill on bottom, oh goodness, goodbye Zebra, yeah goodbye Dazzle. You don't do you don't have a TP, Dazzle? Well, I can't click on you. It would help if I could. She yes. did, did have a TP. I think you go for it. You just go he for had the TP. Punch. He 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 knew Oh, that. he held That's the wall. Yeah. They're Ooh, actually finding the quap. Yeah, but she, she's she not gonna. If you don't get that shackle, you're not killing the Queen of Pain. So, support for a support kill. Um, overall, I think bigger for Leviathan. Of course, they get a bigger bounty since they're so far behind for the Lich kill. Yeah, you know, I just need to push out lanes now and then they'll be able to group off because the lanes are where they were, where they're at the tier 2, they're kind of reaching the tier 3, they're gonna lose the split push game. 100%. So, Ember Spirit getting close to that Daedalus, but he's gonna have to buy out if he wants to go for it. So. And that might just mean that he won't be ready for the next team fight if he doesn't have buyback. Actually, taking uh, a look at that, we don't have a lot of we don't have a lot of buyback in this game. Of course, not a problem for C9. They've got tier twos and so on. I don't think their base. Most likely, the fight's going to happen on Leviathan side, so C9 doesn't have to be as worried. But for Leviathan, I would be picky about keeping my buyback right now. Yeah, it's really important on Quap, and if Shaker gets picked, well, it's really important on him, and they both have it. You know, Quap's opting to buy something. I think this is. Risky. 10 stats when you know they have ages and they're gonna push. Uh, I'm dubious on this. This is game losing decision making. It's not when you the game getting plus 10 stats. It can lose you the game not having buyback. But yeah. if they're opting to not defend and he goes for a split push, then. 
There they might guess. just lose a Rax here. It doesn't feel like, as you said, they have to be really careful about this team fight. Mason's baiting it, playing way up. And no, they go in with the Slithering Crush. They actually miss on Shibby. But Lena, she is in the danger zone. The Shackle manages to not latch, but she might just go down to Bloody Mason before anything. There's Eye of the Storm coming out doing so much damage. They get off, actually. Lucky, lucky Oz Chris. There's the Blink in by Wicked. But where's any of the follow up when your BKB is going to be down? They may have successfully held, but that was everything. And everyone TP'd back. And as you said, Quap not feeling like she can play at max aggression because she didn't have buyback at the beginning. She still doesn't. Ugh. Yeah, they're gonna go again. You know, Ritz is opting to go back. Kind of surprised they didn't go with the BKB down on Quap, but Mason's BKB being down as well. They just want to play it safe. They still have plenty of time on this Aegis. So I hope they go again before it ends. They probably will. And uh, apparently we're having more Reborn bugs. The stats have died because Reborn is now no longer letting us enter them. Uh, it's always fun. So apologies to folks out there who wanted stats, but thank you, Vengeance, for trying your best to get us those stats. Uh, I have my Skype open, so if you see anything interesting, Vengeance, I'll try to take a look sees when I'm not trying to get all the kills. But yeah, that, that's why stats suddenly took a turn for disappearance. Either way, we got a smoke coming out of Leviathan and they're not in they're not at all around Cloud Nine's heroes. They would need the smoke of dreams here, it feels like, to get anything done. Cloud Nine is smoking up as well. So yeah. Leviathan are gonna completely whiff. Cloud Nine's shoving up mid with their spells. Might give Leviathan the hint if they're actually watching the lane, but chances are they're watching the heroes and other things around the map. Yeah, that's something I really actually want to ask players about. If we are able to get a player interview off of this one, I want to ask about like that type of thing. They got the gank up onto Shibby, and Shibby is dead with no buyback because he just finished up that Daedalus. That's what we were talking about, so... They might not know this, so... It, they might play a bit more hesitant. Well, yeah, as you Cloud say Nine. this, they're just in the base for Cloud9. They're trying not to group up. They don't want to take an Echo Slam, but they're going to get rid of this Rax easily, and they could even go for a second since there isn't any Tier 2 coverage. Queen of Pain is TPing back in, but again, not feeling like she was there for the fight, and Jenkins, not anywhere nearby. He has a full stop as well. Manages to get over the Ice Shard so he doesn't take a Shackle in a bad way, but they just lost a Rax. Easy peasy, and now for sure Cloud9 must know that Shibi had no buyback. Yeah, so what they're going to look to do for the next 10 minutes, sorry, in the next 10 minutes when Rush spawns again, I don't think they'll have time to do anything before that. Unless Leviathan do with smoke and get wiped with no buybacks, then I expect Cloud9 to just farm up. Race is working his way to what I presume is a refresher, because the Shiva's refresher just gets a lot of value. It's the double BKB, double Shiva's, double I. Gem finally comes up for Lich, which I like, to secure control. Dazzle as well, so he's trying yep. his best, but it's a lot harder for him. They've picked up a gem for uh, Lich as well, though. Just finished that Atos. And Phase Boots. Yeah, Phase Boots Lich is different. I haven't seen it in a long time. What I'm saying is, this Lich is rich. That's what I'm saying. Really, it's not that rich. He's having he's having a good time, all things considered, I would say, as a lich. Um normally you're really poor. I feel like this lich is I mean it's forty well, minutes and there are racks yeah. up and they're winning. Th I'd say this is pretty poor person. Okay. He's barely scraping by. I'd rather see a four staff in a glimmer cape than an Atos personally. I'd rather see an Aghanims, but these Lich ult ultis haven't been bouncing anywhere anyway, so Sure, you need some kind of group up for that to work, vacuum yeah. Vacuum or like big Luck. lockdown to make the ags worth it on that hero. Or you need to ancient trap people. They removed that, right? Yeah, it's not it's not as good as it used to be back in the old ancient trapping people. By the way, that was like so bullshit. Oh uh, MSS, gosh, MSS BKB. BKB. Yeah, what, what was that? I guess a hot key. For sure. Oh yeah, he wanted, he wanted to pull stuff down. Yep. Uh, Typhoon won't know that because they didn't have any vision, so as far as they know, he still has a BKB. And, and Nemesis is going to play back. Stuff. Yeah, he'll play back anyway. He's got full stuff and blink. He's got a lot of options, but there he's going in. He full stuffs down. They managed to get the stun out. Ritsu thinking about going in. Ritsu's also now popped his BKB. Light Striker Ray misses again. Can Quop do anything here with the auto attack? The Soul Bone's going to be more than enough, and they actually defend against the push. It's what you talked about, maybe going in before you have that second life using Roshan. Not the best play from Cloud9. Yeah, and they're also stacking a lot of gold on the heroes. Uh I'm surprised they went for that. Obviously, just feeling like they could do something there. 
I liked what MSS did go in and force him to respond and get it out, but Ritsu was just on a different page. He popped his BKB after he got glimmered, or one happened before the other, but he should have known he was safe there and Teeman yeah. also going in, so just a bit of miscommunication coming out. I don't think it's too big of a deal, honestly. They only lost the task. Well, if you're Leviathan, I think, given the state of the game, you need a smoke gank of dreams. You're out of smokes, though. You can keep trying to hold on, pray for lucky crits, your Ember Spirit. What do you go next? I feel like he does need... Okay, it, it obviously most efficient is to build that Gloss Cannon. And I feel like other than Shackle and that Slytherin Crush, you're not too worried about Lockdown, but you're so squishy. Do you want a BKB anyway? Just, just to uh, kind of... You have to go damage, and what they're doing is his Shaker's picking off a Lotus Orb, I hope this Perseverance, which is going to allow the Ember to build more Glass cannon -y. But They have Dazzle as a defense support as well, and Lina also has a force, so they have ways of keeping him alive. The only time they can't really keep him alive is when shit like this happens. If he gets caught top, he's definitely dead here. Yeah, if he Actually, gets no, caught, he's got a lot of backup though. So, oh, he remnants away. I think if they could have baited out Ritsu or MSS on that slaughter, it would have been a huge kill for them on Leviathan. Unfortunately, Ember feeling like something, the gig was up and he didn't want to go for it either. Slaughter, though, is going to get Echo Slam. Do they have enough damage? They do! Goodbye, MSS. Wiped off the map with an Echo Slam Laguna Blade. It does mean they don't have that, but I think they have the time right now. Roshan, yeah. Oh, max length Roshan spawn time. How nice for Leviathan. So, they're going to buy themselves a bit more time in the game with the MSS pickoff. Pop again, opting to... We'll go buy back, pick up the hex. This I think is a bit more acceptable because if they can uh, pick off with the hex, kill Roshan, then kind of put them in a much better position. If they have Roche, they can easily defend high ground. Whereas if Cloud9 have it, then I think they can end the game fairly quickly. Yeah, it should help them out a lot having that version. I don't know if they can take it though, and all oh, goodness, poor things. Leviathan scouting it out. They're like, hey, it's it's been nine minutes. It, it there's there's a good chance it should be here, but it's not. It's max length version timer. I kind of hate the RNG factor of it as a player, but it makes it more interesting to watch. I think. Yeah. Before I... you'd literally just have people knowing exactly when it would spawn. Now it's more like if you want to do anything around the map, you have to. Be prepared for the rush. Mm -hmm. It kind of fucks with your head as a player, honestly, but... Yeah, and you can get that really short one, that eight-minute one, and it can just turn a game on its head, because maybe you're behind, but you're on Dire, and it was an eight-minute rush on, and they just are like, no way, it's an eight-minute rush on. So, always all those good little RNG things. Making Dota more interesting as a viewer, although, as you said, it does mean you can execute a near-perfect game and still lose, which is always a bit frustrating. So, we've got the rotations back home coming out of Leviathan, trying to make sure that they do not accidentally lose some more of these. I think they're called Ziggurats and Effigies on the Dire, and they're Moonwalk on the radiant yep you're correct yeah look at look at me knowing really dota really unimportant things no i didn't play dota one i have friends who play Blast dota one me. yeah they actually made me learn they told me off when i started casting they were like you can't call them huts because i used to call them huts they look like huts it looks like maybe the creeps live in these buildings and uh they were like no you cannot call them huts you must pretend that you were a dota one player and say ziggurats and moonwells so, either way, getting back into the game, we have the Refresher finished up on Mason with that Ags, with that Shivas. How do they kill this guy? They don't. They go on the back line. So you think the way that you take the team fights as Leviathan is you kill everybody else, and then just then you, you do the kill everyone else, Mason can't fight all the rest of you. Strat. Well, the only way they take fights is when they have the ability to spawn them out from the high ground, or when they're in the Roche pit and they have the ability to force them away and kind of play mind games with them. <laughs> and if they can manage to chip them down a bit with lights, a few dragon slaves, then it's a lot easier. But unfortunately, they're too far going to defend the Roche pit. Now they see it's down. Yeah, it was a DD on the Windrunner. I mean, you don't. I can't even blame Leviathan. DD, I think they were too slow. Oh, okay. And they're, and they're all completely too, scouted they out. Looking in this area. Yep. So they're gonna get the hell out of dodge on Leviathan and get ready for this high ground defense. And I feel like unless C9 makes a mistake or... Yeah, I feel like C9 has the easiest siege here, right? You can just put Mason on the front lines, you can put Ritsu on that front line. Just kind of have them tank any damage coming out and uh, siege the tower with Focus Fire or Eye of the Storm at this point, so... 
Yeah, they have the double eye as well, so if ever he gets, uh, like, chained or anything, you can just pop BKB, pop refresh to get the second eye out and have the BKB ready again. Only thing is, it's a 9 second BKB, so he might opt to save it a bit, as opposed to just blowing it for use of refresh. So we got a little bit of a push. Is it gonna? Are they actually gonna commit? And as we say that, are they gonna commit? Here goes Mason trying to make sure he gets an angle where he just gets the tower. They've also already got a ward down here. I don't know if that was a mistake. But Slithering Crush coming out onto Shibby. He's not gonna take a huge amount of damage. He does remnant away, but Mason could kill off Zebra instead, going for the towers. There is the refresher pop. Mason and Newsham has already used Laguna Blade on that target, which is tanky as all get up. Now Ritsu coming into their base knows he has the second life if he needs it. Turned into a little bit of a piggy, but still has lots of that wind run going up. And now Francis has to be careful. There's a snowball coming out. Warriors Punch goes through BKB. They do have the Sonic Wave. It hits on two, but it's Mason is still tanking all of this. And it, even though it's Ritsu with the second life, they can't even kill bloody Mason. Looks like Francis is going to go down as well. He manages to blink away Mason, maybe in a bad spot. Can they finally take out this raid boss? But no, they're actually backing out on C9, probably just waiting for the creeps and Mason's going to go back in, but Jenkins is here. He still has Echo Slam, didn't use it at all in that team fight, and maybe part of the problem. They get six sheets to Mason, so up in 20 seconds, oh, <laughs> probably when they'll look to go again, the beach will be similar timing. All things considered, I think, a really lucky and good hold by the Leviathan guys. I did not expect them to be able to hold that. The yeah, Amber needs to be quicker on these defense, because by the time the creeps here, the, the slider was already set up, ready to jump on him, and he has yeah. to play defensive then. But if he can be there and slight as soon as the creeps are there and they just turn his hero around, they have the full four alive. Be a bit uh, greedy with his farm. Yeah, he can uh, hold, happens. Then they can win, for sure. Do you think he's going MKB? I think he's going MKB. He wants to hit on that Windrunner during Windrunner. It's kind of weird. I have mixed feelings on the Ember Spirit going MKB. I understand the other option is the Quop or the Lena doing it, and Quop wants to build utility items, so it makes sense. But at the same time, Ember, as you said, he's very squishy right now. He's not exactly the guy who's going to be like, hey, Windrunner, let me run up to you oh, and like hit that. you. Better than MKB. Oh, okay, okay. I did I not even consider agree that. With this. Yeah, I think we're at the point in the game where if you play it safe, if you go the standard item builds, you go another Daedalus, you just lose the game slowly. You don't turn it into a win. You just turn it into your team being slowly suffocated out. So. Well, he could turn it into the Daedalus, but this is just much easier. And if they're going to lose, they're going to lose because his team doesn't defend him. It's a rapier. Like, rapier or not, if he dies with no buyback, game over. Much. Yeah. So, gonna be a bit interesting, and I think this has been seen already, the rapier. There is a smoke coming out of C9. Can they pick anyone, or do they just really say, hey like guys, it is time to go on the racks? They go! They manage to get Newsom. Newsom being forced off, not up to the right area. Now she's down for the count, no buyback on her. Can they get in range? Can they protect off this Ember Spirit enough that he can get Slider Fist with that uh, with that thing? A big Echo Slam coming out of Jenkins. The follow-up, where is the Slider Fist follow-up? It's on cooldown. They might be able to kill Ritsu here, maybe once, but Mason, he's pounding in on the shibby and with that shallow grave i think he's dead he doesn't get the crits of dreams he does manage to remnant to the fountain so he's still alive they're gonna lose another rack and flying zebra is just all over the place here i don't think he has a good way to get back in it and they have lost a secondary rack they can certainly handle this but i thought with that echo slam of dreams they'd have more but it turns out that shibby had already used his slider fist earlier in the fight Lena's part of these fights as well if she's not there then they lack a lot yeah and we're probably going to see them 5,000 gold behind, 10,000 experience. And as you said, Lena, she is so core to their endeavors right now. And so, this time it was a bit harder because Cloud9 did the smoke play where they got up to the high ground. I really liked the idea they had, and Leviathan obviously weren't expecting it because I think if they did this thing again where they just went up with the creeps, Leviathan would be there in prep with the rapier and it would be really hard for them to breach. I think just unfortunately not expecting the way Cloud9 went for. Ping was a really smart play. And now they're gonna be the Roche yet again. Managed to contest this though and get the Aegis over on the Ember. She's on Quap. They have a chance still. This game's by no means over. It's just hard. Do you think playing this safely for C9 is really warranted? It feels like they're at such an advantageous position they can just slow siege these buildings that waiting for the Roshan might be a bit uh, too cautious? 
They're gonna find the coffee, but they can't do anything. Yeah, with it, she so. will have another blink. It is no longer, you know, it's it's six second cooldown at that level. Although if she gets stunned out here with the invisibility, Weave is thrown out, as is the rod of Atos. They oh they missed the fissure onto Savage and it looks like Lich is getting out. But on the back lines, they catch out. Because Dazzle never died there, they can see your invis for MSS, so buying themselves some more time on this lineup of Leviathan, they're gonna see this board as well. Ice shards fly out, but not gonna latch, and maybe they can this catch- This is why they can't play safe. Oh, sorry, they have to play safe. Yeah. I mean, the reasoning he went there to get, like, the vision out, and Cloudy trying to do the whole, I'll scout them out so you can be safe, blah blah blah. It's just unnecessary play. So, like, I think Cloud9 are one of the better late game teams, so just a tiny bit of shaky to maybe not having Brax. Glad about. I know he's a very experienced player. Yeah, suddenly not always easy to play with a stand in. Um, we haven't seen any new items. We've got the Vlads up on Tusk, who is snowballing to a creep wave and blinking away. Ritsu has opted for a Lincoln Sphere. I guess doesn't want to take that Laguna Blade or the Sheep Stick to the face right now. Uh, you know, you can dodge one of those. You're always blocking a fantastic spell. But not too much else coming out, especially... Oh gosh, Francis pops his BKB. It was five seconds anyway, but that cooldown, if they find out about it... I don't even think it matters at the moment. <laughs> yeah, you just think it's a null issue? Okay, Ember Spirit, oh, next no item. Daedalus or another Divine Rapier? Expect a second to find, honest. <laughs> Point, like... I could argue the crits ratio is really nice, but I'd rather just have more damage so you're less reliant on crits. Okay. And he can sell well, his Aquila, he can sell his bottle. If he gets Aegis or Cheese with the Rapier, then he's happy. Maybe you could go for a Blink as well. The only other option I'd like to see. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. I, I am a big fan of another crit here just because, you know, luck luck based gaming always good but as you said the extra damage you're working up uh you're doing it for the cleave you don't actually have a tool of grouping them up so you're gonna have to go up to them and right click them in the face a little bit if you were this ember spirit and we are again at the stage where buybacks matter now a bit for both teams still cloud nine have a lot more mistakes they could make um not that i feel that they've been making too many of those but they definitely can afford some mistakes just based on the number of towers they have active and the fact that they have two raxes down on their opponent's side but, uh, yeah, we only have two buybacks and a long... I don't know, Quop, Quop is getting close, Earthshake is getting close to his buyback. Quop's gonna buy out for the refresher. As to holding buyback. Mm. Feeling. I don't know, I don't know if that's gonna do enough, although on one hand I say I don't know if it's gonna do enough. Two sheep sticks make me eat my words. I forgot that she picked up sheep. I think having two of those could really end up destroying C9's team fight. You know, that might be kiting Mason for the entirety. Uh, before he gets off his ult or Ritsu, instead of pounding out all of that damage with Focus Fire. So. Yeah, the double BKB is also really important for her to be able to yeah. play more aggressively and let the supports do what they need to do on the Ember instead of worrying about the pop. But we've got... No movement by other side really want to go in. As you said, they just want to wait for Roshan. They're scouting it out. Another longer Roshan, giving Ember more time to get bomb. He's got another 4k up. As you said, he could just... Buy out again if he dies, it doesn't matter. If he dies without buyback, he's just, just gonzo. And they're gonna put the sigil to scout this. I, yeah, it might have enough time to yeah, see it. Yeah, I should see it. So they're gonna have a good idea of when this Roshan is popping up for the kids on C9. And they'll see what they can do, if anything. Yeah, they're doing the right thing now. They just. The lanes in. Leviathan on enough to move outside of their base because of this, which secures them, Roche. Yeah. If you have multiple lanes pushing in and you see them not defending, you know they're coming for you, so you can just back out of the Roche and bait them into it yourself. Yeah. Some fun stats while we're waiting. This is the 90th Divine Rapier on Ember Spirit, but it is only the second time that it is the third item on Ember Spirit, the third major item. So, not, not many t teams have been in this hard position, and also, Mason is the fifth player to go the Refresher Orb, uh, but it is two minutes faster than average, so Mason can be all proud of himself, although, as we said, this game feels like C9 has been in a bit more of a dominant position than maybe other teams would have been. 
Race is normally one of those heroes though, when you get ahead, you stay ahead. Mm -hmm. So... Actually, a blink on the ground, so Ritzo opting to yeah, he wants that damage ages. items instead. And I think, um, I mean, I think you're gonna say, hey, look, I'll rely on you, MSS, to make sure you set up good stuns where I can pound into them with my focus fire, as opposed to I'm gonna set up the shackles with a blink in. You know, the blink a bit more reliable, maybe for those individual pickoffs, although it certainly can give you fantastic positioning in a team fight. Smoke out from Leviathan. And yeah, there's I, theirs were off cooldown for a long time, and now they're off cooldown again. They have been using up all their smokes on Leviathan. Also going for the second crit, like you said. This is a problem now, because this lane is in, it's not getting defended, this lane is... Yeah, it's too obvious. I mean, you know yeah. they're smoked. All they have to do is have Mason or Ritsu stand here-ish, and... Smoke, but Leviathan opting to not go for it, because they know they have to push out the base. It looks Just... like Lich and Slaughter may both be making Lotus Orbs. Probably one is making an AC then, Slaughter, and Lich is making the, that Lotus Orb. I like the double Lotus, to be honest. Just Why? The... Hex! It's already got really good uptime! Yeah, but, like, Hex... <laughs> yes, Honestly, but it's... Hex. Hex, Hex, Hex. Yeah, that makes sense. I could see the Slaughter going for the AC. Perfectly reasonable. Yeah. Uh, I feel like they want to go now, and he's going to get the AC in the next three minutes. Ember Spirit bought out for that Daedalus, so... He has to. If he dies with Rapier, it's game over anyway. He can't afford to hold buyback. <laughs> okay. he can afford to hold buyback is if he has a Rapier in his stash. <laughs> buys back and picks Rapier so he's in the same place he was before. Yeah, but we are not at that state in the game. Bushi did it once. I've se yes, I've seen it, but we're not in the state of the game for this team, with Leviathan being so far behind. C9 Smoke also not going to latch unless they get right up in the base, right right up on their opponent's Ancient, I think. You need you need to be right here. <laughs> I like this... the Ember's position. Yeah? So far behind all of his team, like, they're definitely tanking the gank first. How do you feel about a blink on the Ember? Oh, they are right up in their base, in and time, now the pings... Yeah, no, but I think it could be a, maybe a nice item to allow him to get in and out of these fights a bit better. Yeah, uh, if managed to hold this, I think he'd opt for another damage oh, item. Oh, the shackle it doesn't latch, but does it even need to? Slaughter trying to do the follow-up, but where is Leviathan's answer to this? And Mason is just pounding on their tier 4 towers. They need to do something, they throw out the glyph, but I don't know if that's enough. And here comes the Warus Punch, picking on to Jenkins. Where is the Echo Slam of Dreams? Mason disabling blinks on everyone, he's popping two Eye of the Storm. There's gonna be Lich ulti, it doesn't bounce because of the Remnant away, but Mason, he is gonna do more than enough work. Echo Slam just gonna be used on him, and can they take out the Raid Boss? They finally do! That's a huge amount of gold for them! At the same time, they've got folks in trouble. Ritsu going in deep, has that Aegis as well. Shibi is able to clean up the creep wave, but they need to do something here. Quap, uh, France is coming in on the back lines, and they kill one one down on Alina, on the window. Let's see if they can do it again, but there is the stun coming out on Delina, and she may just go down. Another echo. What? Jenkins has a refresher, refresher out of nowhere. Mason is brought back at the same time, and now they're going to be having to fight up all these heroes again. It looks like Nusham going down doesn't have buyback on this hero, and we can see it's only the Dazzle. They only have a Dazzle buyback, and they don't have the Echo Slam, but again, for C9, maybe they want to back out, because they don't have Aegis and they don't have BKB charges. It's going in a bit too deep in these fights. Yeah, maybe also a miscommunication on what the aim was. It looks like Mason wanted to go for tier 4s, and he did get one down successfully, but the rest of his team were, like, hanging out over here, so... Well, as soon as they start defending their tier 4s, you have to kind of chill a bit. But now this is a razor though. He has no chill. And what is this ward? Does this ward actually help with extra vision? What ward? The dire ward up here. Oh, up there. Oh, we have a yeah, yeah, crush coming out, and they have the slow. But now we've got a nice Shiva's God Glimmer Cape, so nothing's gonna come of this. And I'm really surprised Jenkins um, Enchant Totem doesn't hit. He's gonna be a bit. Irritated by that, but uh, everything gonna sort. So you were talking about this ward. It it gives extra vision. I thought the trees would be blocking it. Oh. Okay. Well, learn something new every day. It looks like Cloud9 couldn't get the tower. Another e enchant totem that doesn't work, but the Slithering Crush Sword does. This guy, he doesn't have buybacks. Jenkins, they need to help him out. Should be trying to see a side of fist angle to do a lot of damage. Can he get anyone? No. He he get like, he you know he kills the shit out of those creeps, but. No cigar on the heroes, and they deny the mid tower. I don't think that was the right play. They're slight of fisting the creeps in the mid lane. Lincoln, uh, Lincoln's pops, and 
Everybody blinks away. We need to keep doing this where these lanes push in and they go far, force heroes to defend their racks, bit of chip damage on their tier 3, uh, tier 4s. Yeah. Keep repeating this, they'll slowly get the base. They Very... get so long to pull a Viper into the yeah. We now have two buybacks. We do have the buyback up on the Ember Spirit. Now he clears off wall. He doesn't actually get the lucky crits at all. They didn't clear off that creep wave. And they've got one Rax down. Just one more. Queen of Pain going in. Francis does have the Sonic wave. It opts not to use it. Needs some sort of slow or anything. Has the Sheep Stick. Why not just use it on the Lich? It backs out. And that's her BKB charge down on the Queen of Pain for a while. Francis not going to be able to engage. And we have an ultimate... A po sorry, a point booster coming out for someone. Someone's that's building... Awesome. Oh, Dazzle, oh, he has the Ags. So Dazzle's Ag is one of the best Ags upgrades, I feel, in the game. You can, you can just never bloody get it, because that's not the role you end up playing. One of the best ways of your effectiveness this game. Yeah. Again, I, I think boss stuff could have been better because of how they've been playing, but... Get the weave on C9. I don't think it's anywhere near as defensive as it is meant to be offensive in game. I like what the Ember's doing as well, pushing the sign out as far as he can for he has to defend. Yeah, and here comes, maybe comes that defense. The Catapult's doing good work. Ice Shard's coming in as well. Queen, oh, Alina, wow. Winner is just going to be BKBing up. They don't have anything to stop this. Mason's there too with his BKB. Maybe some physical damage. They actually do a crap ton of damage to Ritsu, but there are BKBs coming out. There's an Echo Slam, but it's kind of maybe not the bestest in Queen of Pain. She manages to take out Windrunner, but is it going to be enough? They have the Ember Spirit buying back. Where is the Racia? Who's holding it on bloody Tusk? Can they get it back? Slight of Fist Searing Chains doesn't latch, and Tusk is now running away with their Aegis. Wicked trying to do something there. That is uh, actually not wicked. That is Francis, but I don't know if it's enough. And Shibby, he's not going to yeah. get crits. You got to just auto attack people. You got to just, you just got to take their punch lives. Him. And that's a Warus punch, and that's GG. Oh yeah, yeah the Warus punch with Rapier doing some damage. It, it did beautiful things. Let's see if you can get another. They're trying uh, to give Mason the rampage, and he doesn't get it in time because of that shallow grave. But I think. Leviathan, again, maybe just seen I'm showing they're a bit more experienced and better able to seal out the game. Either way, I think it was a very exciting and good showing by both teams. Final thoughts before we get ourselves into game two? I just had the superior draft at the end of the day, and as you said, they're, they're definitely playing like the more experienced team right now. So hopefully yeah. Leviathan gives them something that's a bit more friendly to mistakes. Phew, they made that game really cost them. So, either way, we'll get you guys into a game two really quickly. We've got a few words from uh, the Dota, the, the people who are helping us uh, make sure Starlight is a thing, and I hope you all enjoy the next game.